Hello, my name is Brian Tracy, and we're here at the Indianapolis National Speakers Association annual meeting. And I just want to talk about my friend Ubong, who is one of the very best speakers in the world today. And he has a wonderful message that's full of insight and emotion and ideas that you can use to dramatically improve your life and your work. So if you're thinking of using a speaker of any kind, please talk to my friend Ubong and he will take care of you. Call to rise above all of those challenges because there is an anticipation that we are bigger than this, we are better than this, and that with time, we will take our place. Every day, you will face the challenge. Now is that time, the challenge to perform. For in the end, words are words, but your only reality is performance. So never forget, ultimately, you will be judged by how you perform. Yes, by your performance. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Challenge to Perform. The world is in search of performance-driven people. Every organization and every society, every nation, thrives on the initiatives, the efforts, and the activities of performance-driven people. And you are watching The Challenge to Perform. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like... Or somebody who challenged corporate America! No! Of the moral universe! Cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. Then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small, at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays you can also visit schooloneloquence.org. In um, some corporate organizations, mm. the, the CEO feels that the other board members do not really have what to contribute. Mm. You understand? For instance, in a board meeting, you, you see a CEO say to the other board mem members when they raise up their hands to have a contribution, you say, put down your hand. What, what do you have to say? You know, put down your hand. You, you see, things like that. So even if that person had something to add to the growth of the organization, he keeps quiet because he's going to be shouted down. Mm -hmm. how, how do you reconcile? I understand what you mean. How, how do you reconcile talking about performance now? How do you reconcile the place of um, position mm -hmm. and the place of performance? I was playing. You, you, somebody low there mm -hmm. or down there has something in to offer. To offer, then somebody up there has position. And the that can impact. That can yes. How, how do you reconcile? Looking at our environment. environment. It, it's a very, very important question, and it's a, a question I, I come across when, especially when I work in organizations, working with mid-level managers now and people who have people above them that they have to report to, and therefore their performance depends, as it were, on their superiors and what have you. But what some of these superiors fail to realize is that their own performance depends on their subordinates because if they don't deliver, mm -hmm. it impacts. It puts them in bad light. Now, so what I try to tell people down, further down the ladder to understand is this. You cannot consistently be working 
always looking at your rear view mirror. You can't afford to do that. You've got to understand that, as Sam Mohabu had shared, that whenever his bosses told him, sell 10 products, he went out of his way to sell 15 because he always made provision for a discount. That there was always going to be that likelihood that the man above him may not necessarily like his face so much as to give him all his due. So if they say, sell 10 products a week, I'll make sure I sell 15, so that by the time they start discounting, whichever way it goes, my 10 will still be intact and performing, whichever way you look at it. So what's the lesson here in response to your question? People lower, uh, people who are lower down the, uh, should I say the corporate ladder, must understand that they need to go the extra mile. They must play the game as if their entire lives depends on it because it does. They must make sure if you've been asked to do X, make sure you're going the extra mile. That's how to play the politics of performance in the workplace where positioning, where the position or where the positional realities are not to your advantage at the moment. And that's even the only way you can guarantee a climb as you move along within the system. Yeah. But if you go there, you're, show, you're clocking in and clocking out, doing the barest minimum. Most likely, what will begin to happen is that you begin to blame your superiors, because you find the perfect excuse. You, you sell to yourself that thinking that no matter what I do, no matter what I do, I can never please this man or this woman. They will still mark me down. Your performance must always be in your control. You control your performance. If you're not in that position, then you are in serious trouble. Regardless of what you do or where you work. The principle is that you control your performance. You control your performance. I personally, I know people who don't like traveling in any vehicle they don't control. There are people who don't like any mode of transportation that takes control out of their hands. So some people don't like flying because they don't like the fact that they don't know what's going on. They just need to sit down there in the dark and wake up the following morning at their destination. Some people just don't like that. But when you look at getting results and making yourself valuable, to your organization or even with regards to your own business, if you run one, you've got to be thinking of how do I ensure control. And most workplaces these days are designed to ensure movement, whichever way you look at it. Most workplaces in, in this sophisticated era that we live in are designed, if you're, living, if you're working in a private sector driven environment, it will be a worry for let's say the HR people that you've remained static at this post or at this position with these responsibilities over a period of two, two, three years is the average. You should move on to another set of uh, uh, functions or responsibilities. Therefore, you've got to acquire additional skills in, in moving on. So to a very large extent, you control your performance. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like... What's the money who challenged corporate America? No. Oh, the moral universe. Cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. Then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small, at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays you can also visit schooloneloquence.org. There are people who are generally referred to as generalists. Mm -hmm. There are people who have such capacity, they, uh, and that is their strength, mm. that they can have you, you can have a bit of virtually everything. They do have that capacity 
or that talent. Let me put it that way. In fact, I tend to refer to them as genius as well. Yeah. The likes of Alexander the Great belonged in that ilk. They, you could see, conquering from nation to nation, from continent to continent, could adapt. He, that was the capacity. There are people who have that. That's why we're still going to come. This is their potential. The, what's it called now? Uh, is it uh, the guy who did, uh, is it Leonardo da Vinci? The Da Vinci's of this world. Is it Leonardo da Vinci now? Yeah. That is, okay, the Da Vinci's of this world. Yeah. You could see, uh, you could see, these are people who, who they do have, you know, they do have such qualities. And so you can find that they are able to play across the board with some level of influence. But this generalism, if I may use that word, is their strength. That's the truth. They can adapt. They can relate to anything that comes. They find ways. They are so easily amenable to all sorts of spheres of human endeavors. And they can, therefore, make contributions. That's their strength. I, I'm coming to that just a second. Now, you have to find what is your potential. You've got to find your potential. I couldn't possibly operate Everything I try to do leads me back to achievement motivation, leads me back to something inspirational, something enthusiastic and energetic. Even when I'm teaching public speaking, there's supposed to be a, a, a separate area, a function-specific area. I'm still, it's always from that motivational standpoint, I'm still taking it from that angle. You've got to find your, your ground and stand on it. From that ground, push out. That's the point. So if you look at it from a potential standpoint rather than from a position standpoint, because people look at things, they get into an organization, oh, I want to become the MD. They don't look at it, okay, let's make you the MD. Things begin to fall apart. They don't look at it from the standpoint of their contribution. I want to make an impact in this field. And if that leads to becoming the chief executive, I know that I just need additional skills to be able to manage around it, but I will drive it from this standpoint of my strength. So it's looking at it. Some people are generalists. They are geniuses. That's nature. I'm sorry if you don't have it, you don't have it. But be thankful for what you have. Some people are just so narrowed in their approach. It's just one area. That's all they know. And everything they do, they tend to color everything they do with that sense of ability that they have. They paint from that angle. We're going to take a break. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like... For somebody who challenged corporate America! No! Oh. Cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. Then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass. A two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small, at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays. You can also visit schooloneloquence.org. Find style by simply restricting it to the confines of the personality. Find yours. That, and, and I, I'm sticking with that definition. Yes. However, when you now begin to talk of appealing to your audience, there are a number of elements you've got to look at when you're delivering a speech. There's what I, there's what I call the commands of public speaking. Whenever you're speaking in public, or making the presentation, you must have these three commands. All three must be in place. There is no two over three here. 
There's no two out of three, but we put it in, you know, uh, in that context. There's no two out of all three. The first command is the command of your message. The content that we talked about earlier on. You must be a master of your subject matter, a master of your matter. You must know it in and out. You must be ready and prepared to take it from whatever angles you so wish so that you can freely express the thoughts. You have become an embodiment of it. Then you must have a command of the language that you are using. Language is contextual. It might be English, it might be Bibio, it might be Aosa, Yoruba, whatever, Igbo, French or Spanish. It doesn't matter. But you must have a good grip of the language so that you can use the right vocabulary and the right registers to drive your message across. That's why sometimes people have problems, say, with the English language. They might start a statement in present tense and they're struggling, mixing up their tenses and what have you. So you must have a command, and that becomes a problem to the audience, or a problem for the audience. And then the third command is the command of what I call your courage. Or you can also use passage. This is your delivery. So you raise the issue of, the issue of so some audience, there are some audiences that might not want you to look so passionate and all that, others might. Not necessarily. Where do you draw, where does passion come from? It comes from your personal connection with your subject matter. You are so excited about what you're speaking about. Then as you speak, you're animated. It doesn't, it's not an affront. Your subject matter means a lot to you and you want, you, you want people to, to feel you because when you're speaking in public, remember, not only are people hearing what you're saying, but they are also feeding on what they are seeing. Now, if you stay rooted to one spot, I'm talking to a group of professors, uh, PhD holders, the dynamics of marketing. Sales as defined by the 17th century dictionary demands <laughs> that we sell every day. You're talking to professors, and you start bringing up technical terms. Both you and the professors will soon go to sleep. I can assure you of that. Make sure you have enough pillows around. But when you come and say, I know I'm, I know I'm addressing Authorities. authorities. <laughs> you are the eggheads of our industry. I can still see uh, uh, Professor James, who taught me 15 years ago in the university. You see, you make it engaging. No, the professors will begin to feel that, wow, this, is, this person is paying tribute to, you know, to, her, to her roots. I can still see Professor Michael. I see. So I know I'm talking to people who already know. So you will permit me yeah. if some of the points I make become contentious. But there are issues. I take some exception to some of the issues that you professors already know. So what are you doing? You're stirring controversy. With controversy, there's interest. There's excitement. Yes. Yes. Participation. There's participation. Mm -hmm. Because public speaking actually is about creating a human experience. They may forget what you told them, but they'll never forget, as someone said, how you made them feel. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like... What's the money? Who challenged corporate America? No. Oh, 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 Cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. Then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays.
You can also visit schooloneloquence.org. So be free. The, where you will have issues with such audiences would be if you don't know your matter. You have not mastered your matter. And you come across as shallow, as not knowing enough. Then there will be a problem. But once you know your subject matter, free yourself. Why must we shackle ourselves you know, to one spot and stay rooted like a potted plant? And we're trying to be, I don't know what word to use here now. Trying to be very... Very well packaged and all that. So, in responding, uh, I'm going to come to you, please. In responding, I don't know if these illustrations uh, or these three points have uh, uh, these three points have effectively uh, responded to your issues. You must have all of these elements. Yeah, number two, no. So, number two, language. Language then becomes, for example, if you have a very sophisticated audience, it is expected that you would have to use from time to time words that relate very strongly to that audience. You're not, it would not be too wise for you to be too pedestrian or too basic because that audience is far, far uh, sophisticated than the basic group. Now, it doesn't mean you should try to be pretentious. You still have to be yourself. It doesn't mean every word you use will be high grammar. That's not what it means. So it's got to be functional and you've got to allow yourself uh, to, uh, to, to come through. So in mirroring, the best way, you talked about mirroring your audience. The best way to be of value to your audience is to make sure that you are on fire. Not necessarily being aggressive and shouting all over the place, but you are, you, you are animated, you, you are in love with what it is that you're talking about because you want to get them to buy into what you're saying. If you don't look like someone who is passionate about what it is you're talking about, how do you expect them to key into it? If you don't look like you believe what you're saying, how on earth do you expect them to do that? So, you, so these are some of the things that you look at. Now, you raised some two examples of uh, people who speak very high grammar in the public domain. I really feel, I, I, I really feel for myself, I've had to use dictionary a, a couple of times, I'll be very honest, in my bid to, to make a meaning out of some of those remarks. Now, I don't think that's effective. That's not an effective way to communicate. It's not. Because if we all have to keep reaching out for our dictionaries and our Blackberries or whatever, our iPods or iPads, sorry, iPads rather, not iPods, or, or mobile phones, mobile devices, to check out what you're saying and you're still speaking, by the time we make sense of one word, mm, you've, you've gone. I remember once, this was about eight years ago, in Sue Leary, he read from the book of Revelation, and I heard a voice of many waters, blah, blah, blah. When he finished, he started to preach. And I heard the voice of many waters. It was a conglomeration of an aquarium consortium. It was a magnification of divinistic proportion. Now, my friend Kade and I, it was a conglomeration of an aquarium consortium. Kade goes for the dictionary. And I'm saying, conglomeration, conglomeration, conglomeration. Con UAC is a conglomerate. Unilever is a conglomerate. So it was a conglomerate. It's a big item so okay it was it was a conglomeration a conglomerate is something that is very big aquarium aquarium uh, that's an aquarium on the table now is water aquarium is water now he's still battling with the dictionary consortium 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 oh, okay i remember this advert in the morning uh, when they were doing value card adverts value card is brought to you today by a consortium of banks you remember those days <laughs> now he's battling with the dictionary and i'm battling with residual knowledge trying to Trying to dig out something that I think relates, yeah. trying to put them together. <laughs> All he was trying to say was that it was the flowing yeah. together of many rivers to form a mighty ocean. It took us into conglomeration. <laughs> conglomeration. Do you know that the meaning of that 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 word conglomer conglomeration of an aquarium consortium? <laughs> so it took us. He, he took us. <laughs> he took us. He took us first. He took us first into the financial world, you know, into the corporate world, into the back into the water world, then linked it with the financial world, and expected an ordinary citizen like you and I to interpret. Where do you think he was after we had finished unraveling just that phrase? 
the message was over. Yes. Is that effective communication? No. It is not. Uh, that is, the, you know. so, so, that is verbal ornamentation, excessive usage. <laughs> It's, an, it's excessive usage and we should be toned down. However, if he's talking to a group of PhD holders in English, that's their audience, there are 50 of them. Fine, he can raise his game and do that. But if he's talking to you and I, conglomeration of an aquarium consortium. Take that home with you and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>